Thank you for joining uh, me, Dr. Wong, and, and, and uh, have more knowledge about the COVID-19 because I'm sure right mm. now everybody's very, um, everything's so scattered. The news is saying one thing, mm. people are saying another, social media is saying something else. Yes. Uh, I really just want to be able to speak to you because yeah. uh, I know that you're part of uh, mm. the project that Circle DNA is doing called Project Screen, which is bringing more um, home testing available uh, in Hong Kong right now. Um, okay, so one of the questions is, uh, what is the difference between COVID-19 and SARS or the flu at the moment right now? I mean, we, uh, we know that this yeah. is... That, that is a really good question, good questions. You know, for the season of flu, Actually, the community had a reasonable immunity and uh, this disease is not that uh, deadly. The mortality rate is like less than uh, is like 0.1% and then we get specific treatment for the seasonal flu and also we get the vaccine. So uh, comparing seasonal flu and SARS and COVID-19 is uh, totally different, right? And then the, for COVID-19, I can mention that it is a new disease. Uh, actually, we are learning every day, you know, uh, the evidence uh, one day ago can be different from evidence uh, one day later. So we need to have an open mind, right? But when we compare uh, the, uh, the, the case low, you know, uh, you know, during the SARS episode, actually the total number over the world is like uh, 8,000, right? The mortality is like uh, less than 800. But nowadays, we already had 2.6 million of cases of COVID-19. So significant difference. And the mortality is like, uh, is like uh, nearly 180,000. It takes 180,000 lives. So very severe. They are, uh, when comparing these two diseases, actually, uh, when we talk about the case fatality rate, actually for the SARS is quite severe, it's like 10%. You know, up to now, the case fatality uh, rate for the COVID-19 is like 7%, a little bit less than SARS. However, you know, the uh, COVID-19 seems to be very infectious, you know, very infectious. And one phenomenon that we are worrying about was that uh, uh, actually many people get infected uh, and they remained asymptomatic. That means that they remain asymptomatic it is difficult to catch these patients and isolate them so that it will spread all over the world. This question. Yeah, so what is your take on the mask situation right now? Do the masks really work? Yeah, I think masks is definitely very important. I will wear masks every day, at least uh, in the coming years. Because, you know, the COVID-19, the SARS, the seasonal flu, uh, the seasonal flu, they are all viral infection transmitted by droplets you know, by droplets. That means that uh, when we are talking, there can be droplets going out. Uh, when we are coughing or sneezing, there would be significant droplets coughing out. So that when the droplets, uh, when the infected person's droplets contact another person's uh, mucosal membrane, for example, nose, for example, eye, then th this virus can go into the body of the other person. So that if you wear a mask, no matter what type of mask, surgical mask that is very good, N95 that is even a uh, higher level, but that should not be the uh, uh, mask wear by the general population, should be left to the uh, medical personnel, they are had a very high risk. And uh, even if you had a DIY mask, uh, that is not a surgical mask, it's uh, already good enough, you know. So wearing mask is very important uh, uh, for this disease because it is droplet transmission. Mm, so it's a droplet transmission, yeah. not airborne, right? Yeah, it's, it is not airborne. This is very important because, you know, uh, for airborne, it, airborne means there is an ultra small droplets right there and these droplets can flow in the air even after uh, you are coughing, sneezing, after maybe uh, 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 15 minutes in the room, there are small particles right there. So another person going in, they can be infected, right? But for droplet transmission is not as uh, aggressive as the airborne because when we when we are talking, uh, when we cough or sneeze, the bigger droplets actually would uh, travel for you know for a distance. Then they would fall down to the ground. So that people coming in afterwards, they are less likely to be infected. You know, so difference. Air, airborne is 
What about wearing goggles and like gloves and all of that stuff? Yeah, for goggles, it's a good idea. You know, if you can do that, you feel feel comfortable because one way of the transmission is those droplet can contact your your mucosa membrane at your eyes and then leading to infection. So, it is optimum if you can wear uh, a goggle. That, but uh, I mean, the the priority is for a mask, even a DIY mask. That is a good idea. Uh, some predict that as the summer approaches, the heat might kill off the mm. virus. What do you think about this? Yeah, that is a reasonable guess. You know, for those uh, seasonal viral infections, actually these viruses uh, are not uh, are not uh, uh, doing well in the higher temperature, uh, higher humidity uh, in general. However, there are many studies uh, showing that for COVID nineteen, it may not be the case. So we cannot count on that. So the, I would expect uh, uh, when the summer is coming, the COVID-19 won't go away, just like in those common seasonal uh, viral infections. And you can see that now in Singapore, in Thailand, actually the temperature is quite high and they also have significant cases. Um, there's a question I think is pretty interesting is uh, it's Alicia Ding is asking, are our chances of contra uh, contracting COVID-19 mm. multiplied whenever we order takeouts or get food delivery? Ah, oh, you know, now the, now the, the weight of business for the restaurants are take away, right? Because uh, uh, we all think that going to the restaurants are, are a little bit dangerous. That is also true if there are uh, outbreaks is still in the city. So for take away, I mean, uh, I presume the food are clean, right? Hopefully, right? And then uh, there are still chances that, uh, you know, some in asymptomatic infected people uh, or people are infected who had mild symptoms who are still going to work because they don't get uh, adequate testing. They can cough and then the droplets can land on the package of the takeaway food so that when we hand over for this and then we touch our eyes, our nose, then we can be get infected. So good hand washing, that is a very good idea. So another question was that whether, whether this COVID-19 can be transmitted by the oral fecal route like the hepatitis A. So far, most of the specialists don't think COVID-19 can be transmitted by the oral fecal route. Okay. okay. By food? Or yeah, by food. By food. For example, contaminated food. So if I just cough, but what if I cough on the food? <laughs> I mean, uh, there is always possibility. For example, if the, uh, if the foods are contaminated and then you touch the food, you take the food, then you may touch your face, then you can get the, the risk of being transmitted, you know. But not eating it? Yeah, there is no evidence, there is no concrete evidence that the disease can be transmitted by the fecal oral route, right? Uh, this is the current consensus. I mean, it's I, I, I'm, I'm always open-minded because, uh, you know, every day, maybe after one month, there are more data concerning this, uh, the weight of transmission by the uh, oral fecal route uh, are established. But I can tell you so far, most of the specialists don't think this is a way to transmit the virus. Um, what do you think is the biggest misconception of COVID-19 right now? Okay, okay. So the first, uh, the first thing I think was that uh, initially some people think that uh, the COVID-19 is transmitted by airborne, you know. So this is not true, you know, so that, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the very beginning people had, uh, uh, you know, tr everybody would try to uh, buy those face masks, buy those N95 that would decrease the supply to the medical personnel. So this is not true. You know, in some particular situations uh, which can uh, make COVID-19 transmitted light airborne, that is in the hospital setting. For example, in the isolation ward, doctors are taking care of the COVID-19 patients and then they, they may be resuscitating the patients because the patients had difficulty breathing. They are using the uh, high pressure suction, they are using those uh, nebulizing machine and then in this situation, COVID-19 can behave as airborne. So, you know, for the medical personnel, we are advised that all these medical personnel should wear the N95, the more higher level protection that can protect against airborne transmission. But in the community, uh, there is no indication for, uh, uh, for N95.
The second thing I can think about was that uh, some people would think the disease is associated with some uh, ethnicity. For example, uh, Chinese people would have this virus, but not uh, other countries' people. So this is not a good idea. This is not true because the virus infects uh, people from all over the world. So this is important, very important message. And uh, some uh, really funny one was that uh, some people think about uh, the infection can be transmitted by the high technology 5G. <laughs> that is really funny. Some people are burning up the 5G stations. I don't know. <laughs> I might be a skeptic on that. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 it's interesting where everybody's taking this. Um, mm. But I, I kind of want to touch base on the airborne again real quick in the sense of if I'm coughing, mm. It, but then there's still that distance of the system. Yeah, yeah. People say it goes longer <laughs> mm. or it just stays there for, you know, or does it, if I cough in this area, does it stay uh. in the air or does it just go boom and then all of a sudden it just drops to the floor? Ah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. So that is a very good question and I would like to clarify that. So I would think no distance is 100% uh, safe, right? It's, uh, it's uh, no definite distance. Why people are saying six feet or I was saying, for example, 1.5 to 2 meters, uh, that is uh, a rationale. Because for uh, droplet transmission, actually when we are talking, you know, when we are talking, when we are trying to eating, there can be some respiratory droplets coming out from our mouth or our nose. You know, uh, you know for the droplet transmission, usually if we allow 2 meters, you know, the droplets means bigger bigger drops so that uh, within these two meters they may land on the ground so that the people uh, I mean uh, at more than two meters should be safe but when you think about uh, if I sneeze or if I cough you know the pressure is, very, is really high these two meters are not safe right so that means that uh, these two meters is only safe if if the people are not coughing or sneezing. If the people are coughing and sneezing, definitely you need extra protection. That is some sort of shielding, You're right? Face mask, surgical, non-surgical, uh, they can help. So this, I'm, I would say, is uh, around two meters is uh, the general accepted precaution for social distancing. Wow. <laughs> Then, and then the perception of how long it lasts on plastic and paper. Ah, yeah, yeah. And steel. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, this uh, virus is, is quite tough, right? They can in in good in good environment for them. You know, for them, for example, it's a very smooth metallic or plastic surface. If the the humidity is low and uh, if the temperature is not high, they can survive over days long time so it would be really very dangerous when we touch the surface contaminated with the virus and then we accidentally touch our face particularly the eye nose then we can be infected so this in pride we need to have very good hand hygiene so how long do you think it's going to take until we actually get a vaccine going because everybody's saying it to like it's going to take mm -hmm. about 18 months yeah, um, you know, you know, you know, uh, vaccine is always very important in infectious disease. Normally, uh, in developing vaccine, they need to have a phase one, phase two, phase three test that usually takes several years, you know. But you know, the world is uh, all over the world is working hard on the COVID-19. I would expect this process would be sooner than several years. You know, the, but uh, you know, uh, now there are many companies already uh, exploring or investigating uh, to develop this vaccine. And actually, human study have been started uh, for the efficacy and for the safety of these vaccines. So the, I would expect, I would expect at least it takes one more year to have the vaccines to be available to the general population. For example, the timing would be, uh, you know. In the, at the end of next year. However, because uh, there are still obstacles in developing the vaccines because uh, there are significant mutations documented 
uh, in the COVID-19 show that uh, these mutations would pose a significant uh, uh, effect on the development of the vaccine. For example, you develop one vaccine that is useful to, for the current string of coronavirus and then one year later there is some mutation and which would decrease the immunogenicity for the vaccine. Then you need to start again. So it's a difficult way to develop the vaccine, but uh, 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 we are all working hard on this. Mm, okay. And so what does it actually mean then when somebody is tested positive? Okay. It depends on the method of testing. For example, the gold standard testing now we are using uh, the uh, RT-PCR method. That is a molecular method detecting the RNA of this virus. So it's a very direct test. If you are test positive, we will confirm the test. If you are positive that you are you are infected with COVID-19, right? And you are presumed to be infectious. Uh, you are presumed to be infectious until proven otherwise. So it's very accurate diagnosis. Um, and then, so what if someone tests negative? What is the possibility of false negative? Oh yeah, uh, the possibility is that that you are not uh, being infected uh, by the virus. If you get no symptoms, it is first possibility. But there can be false negative. There are two major reasons for the false negative. The first reason was that you are being infected, but at a very early age, so that the viral load inside your body is still very low, so that the viral load in the collected specimen actually is too low to be detected. Maybe after several days, if you retest again, you will be positive. So that is the one possibility is due to the low viral load in early infection. The second possibility, uh, actually, uh, the second possibility is that is the is the uh, is the process of the specimen collection. For example, if we would like to collect a deep throat saliva, you need to collect that in the morning without brushing your teeth, drinking any water. Actually, if I drink a lot of water, then I proceed for the collection. Then this specimen may not be reliable, so it can create a false negative test. So even after the two weeks incubation period, there's still a possibility of it coming back. Or even if you heal during, if, you, if, you, if your body regenerates and your immune system beats it, but then um, you're still uh, a possibility to, to infect other people as well. Mm. So uh, what I'm going to say was that uh, in general, if the, if the patient is uh, infected with COVID-19, actually some form of immunity would develop so that there would be some protection for this patient to get the COVID-19 against. But you know, because this is a new viral infection, we are not sure the level of the protection, whether it is 100%, 80%, so it is not sure, uh, right? And then uh, we are also not sure about the duration of the protection. For example, if there is an immunity, it can last for maybe several months or several years, uh, we don't have any data. So that uh, it's not a good idea to presume if a patient recover from COVID-19, they are resistant to COVID-19. It's not a good idea to presume this, right? Right. It's just like if, if I get the flu this year and I'm okay, but next year yeah. I'm again. And, yeah, yeah, definitely. And taking into consideration of many new mutations of this virus, this virus is very clever, you know. Uh, we cannot presume if we are being infected once, then we are resistant to the COVID-19 or coronavirus. We, we are Superman, we do not need to wear masks, we do not need to wash your hands. That is not a good idea. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a while until all of this clears, like, you know, for us to really go back to... Yeah. You know, not wearing masks and, and, mm -hmm. and all of that. It, it's, um, it's pretty effed up. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately right now we were just talking about how, um, you know, we, we've had you know, a lot of questions about the COVID-19 and, and, you know, it goes on and back and forth, but at the end of the day yes. right now, it just seems like the most important thing for everybody to do is to, uh, of course, keep their immune system up and stay healthy, have proper hygiene, you know, social distancing and all of that stuff. Um, but one thing um, that's really important is the, the COVID-19 test. And we just, I just wanted to talk to you more about that because I know right now we're developing a program uh, initiative to actually inject um, 
more testings into the home environment. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, firstly, Ben, so I just want to say, you know, very appreciate. I've been looking at uh, the engagement uh, just on IG now. There's so many great engagement from people, uh, you know, thanking you yourself and, you know, certainly appreciate you spreading this to the community because I think there is a lot of misconception in the community, right? Uh, and certainly, as you mentioned, uh, for Circle DNA and certainly Ben's been an early supporter from day one uh, in terms of you know, utilizing your influence to spread the word about the value of prevention, right? So I think that's key. Uh, so, you know, super excited. As, as I told you last week, we launched Project Screen in Hong Kong uh, as a duty of responsibility. Uh, we felt we were one of the only companies in Hong Kong that actually could do this in a private sector, which was basically increase the accessibility of testing. So we did it as a nonprofit initiative. So individuals can basically order online, get their test kit in the next day, receive the, uh, the test kit back to our laboratory, in 24 hours, you get your test results back. Uh, because the challenge is you know, around the world, lack of testing. Or even if there is testing, how do you make it easy? So that's the goal that we wanted to provide here to the community here in Hong Kong. Uh, we also worked with eight other companies to do this. Uh, you know, Prudential, HPA Social, Exelon, uh, NGOs such as Tonghua Group, hospitals. Uh, so certainly it's been a great response thus far. That's really, really cool, man. I'm really excited to hear that. Um, so the test kits, when they come, is it just like the DNA test kits where it's just the swab or does it go more, you know, like the other ones where they take this, the, the tube down the nose and all that stuff, like how? Yeah, yeah. so I will show you how it actually works. Um, so what we wanted to do is develop something that was quite easy and accurate, right? I think a lot of times when you do have the nose swabs, uh, it's actually quite painful. Uh, and people actually, <laughs> No, it's not a pleasant experience, even when you do the drill swab, it's also quite difficult because you may not be able to get the right uh, method. Uh, so what we developed actually, we made it actually a deep drill saliva sample. Correct? So basically in the morning when you wake up, this is where you actually get the sputum uh, from the deep drill. So it's actually easy and also less infectious as well. Right? Uh, so certainly we made it, the whole protocol you know, very easy. Wow. So and then that right now, when, are, when, is, when is that actually going to be available to the people in Hong Kong at the moment? Um, so we started offering this last Wednesday. Uh, so certainly uh, we've already been shipping the kits out. Uh, individuals you know, love it. Employers are actually joining up as well, right? So companies, uh, you know, for example, you know, you know, just last night we just confirmed delivery rule. We'll be testing the riders. Uh, for COVID-19 testing because certainly they want to protect their riders and their riders want to make sure they're protecting the consumers and certainly with their families, right? Uh, we're also working with NGOs such as Tonghua Group in which we had a separate donation in which they're providing 500 test kits to medical workers. Uh, and then so that's great. And Prudential is also subsidizing $300 HPD for any healthcare worker and their families in Hong Kong. So the price of our tests if you're a healthcare worker, our family is basically around 90 USD. Um, and then certainly if you're individual wise, it's 125 USD. So there's zero profits. We're just doing this as a sense of responsibility to help the community tackle COVID-19. That's awesome, man. Um, now, I know right now it's only for Hong Kong. Um, but is there a possibility where you guys can expand? And do you see that expansion happening uh, what type of time frame? Yeah, so right now we are quite focused on expand. I mean, what we right now we are quite focused on Hong Kong and basically you know, helping the community, of course. given that our laboratory is here, the headquarters is here. So certainly in time, we'll look in terms of expanding uh, possibly to other countries. Uh, certainly this will be within the next few months, possibly, uh, but certainly our main focus right now is for Hong Kong and neighboring countries. Uh, so certainly this is very important. I see. So right now, well, it, it, would you guys, if there was a, like a possibility of like, if I ordered a, a X amount, right? I'm not saying mm -hmm. for, for just like me and my family, yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. but like if I ordered X amount and shipped it to like the frontliners, would you guys be able to do something like that? So I'm just curious as, as you know, but then it, yeah. it, it, would, it would take a while because they would have to sh mail it back to you yeah. guys. In Correct. One of the challenges would be the logistic aspect uh, because basically right now when we get the deep drill saliva sample, it comes back to our laboratory in Hong Kong the same day. Uh, and then the next day, individuals, we release the results on the digital perspective, right? 
Uh, we also provide a, a, a registered medical professional to give you your, re your results and go through it if you are positive. So we want to make sure everyone actually has the adequate information they need. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, it's definitely exciting stuff and I'm really glad that, you know, I'm blessed to be a part of this whole whole project, you know, from the beginning, from Circle DNA and everything that you're doing. Thank you for all that you've been doing, Danny. Um, and is there anything else that you want to add in to, to let everybody know what else they can do um, during this time? Yeah, sure. You know, thank you, man, for your support and everything from day one, right? I think right now is really the time to actually have many people come together. Right? I think that's the only way we will fight COVID-19 is actually having a joint effort. So, yeah, yourself, myself, the public sector, the private sector. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that's going to have disagreements about whatever life we know it is today. Right. But I think when we look at this whole situation, hopefully we can think about what's truly important. And that is about coming together to fight COVID-19. Uh, so certainly, yeah, thank you. I think everyone's hopefully yeah, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, you know, definitely wear masks, practice hygiene. Uh, certainly, I think we've you know, been able to do that quite effectively here in Hong Kong, uh, etc. And certainly, yeah, again, thanks so much for the support. Uh, I think the more we spread about this, about fighting it together is the thing that will ultimately win.